Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This has been one of the more difficult uh, hearings I've had in Congress over the last four and a half years. I'm very frustrated in the narratives that are being uh, pushed. I'm very frustrated with the lack of accountability. I'm very frustrated just across the board with the manner in which uh, particularly Ranking, Man Ranking Member Raskin's opening statement um, characterized all of this. And I tried to think through what made me so mad about it. And I'm offended. I'm offended at the manner in which he's accusing the Trump administration. I tried to think through it. I tried, what's, what's wrong with it? Why is it so bad? Um, and the best example I could think of is the JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, that was negotiated by the Obama administration. What was the problem? Everybody knew the problem. The problem was Iran's trying to get a bomb. Uh, there was disagreement over how to best go about stopping that, but they chose a path. That path was agreed to in July of 2015. Um, when Trump got into office, he said, I disagree with that path. We're going to take a different path. And in May of 2018, he pulled out. Um, the, the thing that m drives me crazy is that if Iran had gotten a nuclear weapon during the Trump administration, and he had not pulled out of the JCPOA, this would be 100% Trump's fault. It wouldn't be Obama's fault. Um, we, 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 wouldn't be, we wouldn't be talking about the $400 million that was sent over in uh, US currency. Uh, we'd be talking about Trump and Trump's failure. But here we are, 13 service members are dead, um, thousands of Afghans have been brutally murdered, uh, women have had their rights given to them and them take, taken away in a manner in which this world has never seen. But we're talking about Trump's failure because of the agreement that he entered into, his administration entered into, in February of 2020. So, so this is Trump's fault because he tried to do something we all knew we needed to do. We needed to leave Afghanistan. The question was how. He, he negotiated an agreement, his administration negotiated an agreement, and now here we are having a hearing about what went wrong and what we can do differently to make sure it doesn't happen again in the future. But instead of talking about that, we get these ridiculous documents that I read, the classified documents that are just ridiculous. Um, we need to actually get to the bottom of this so it doesn't happen again. The, the American lives that were lost deserve that. They deserve that. Um, I, I guess, Mr. Sopka, do you think that my JCPOA an, an, an analogy is, is a good one? I mean, did, did the Biden administration have the ability to change course? I mean, they technically delayed the withdrawal from May to September. They could have pushed it back further. They could have said, uh, Taliban, if you do X, Y, Z, we're going to stay. We're going to do this. We're gonna. He could have shot, shot some missiles somewhere. He could have done anything. But instead, he didn't. And... 13 service members died, thousands of people were killed, and our credibility in the global stage is lost. So, I mean, I guess, what are your thoughts on my JCPOA analogy, number one? And number two, in what world are we talking about Trump's deal and not talking about the mistakes that were made in the, the days and weeks leading up to the withdrawal? Well, Congressman, um, I, I, I really can't comment on the JCPO. Uh, do you think analogy, it would have been Trump's fault but, if Iran got a? Well, do, do you think it would have been Obama's fault if Iran got a nuclear bomb under the Trump administration? Look, I, I think you're asking a good question. I think this committee, I think, or the um, state IG or whatever, should look at that question. You know, was it reasonable the delay? I can't tell you whether it was reasonable for President Biden to delay or not. And I don't know if the, maybe the state IG is looking at that. But those are good questions to ask. That's, that's what oversight should be. And it should be independent, nonpartisan oversight. And I, I fully support that. I've, I spent 20 years working on Congress, working for Sam Nunn, John Dingell, Bill Roth. We did independent oversight. And I think you need to do that. But I, I can't really tell you if he's right or wrong on that because we haven't looked at it. The 20 years that we spent money and blood in Afghanistan and the 13 service members that died deserve accountability for the mistakes that were made. And we are not doing our job. The documents that I read, these classified documents, biggest joke I've ever seen. 
Um, we need to do our job. We need to make sure this doesn't happen again. We need to learn from our mistakes so we don't make them again. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. And, and I agree with you 100 percent. 